I just told my ex-girlfriend's dad who's coming over to visit. He go, hey, hey man, I bought a new camper. You want to come over and see it? <laughs> Let's get his reaction real quick. What do you think, man? No, man. You got another one? Yeah. This is a shorter one, though. Yeah, it's 26 foot. And your other one is what? 28. <laughs> what was the name of the other one? It was a Legrand. No, I meant, what, what was her, her name? Oh, Ava. Ava, and then what's this one? This one's name is Ivy. Ivy. Well, Ivy is, uh, Ava's pissed off at Ivy. Okay? <laughs> yep, there she is. Boys and girls, Ivy, the 1976, actually it's model year 1977, Avion Travelcator, 26 foot. Not really sure the model number. I'll have to look that up. So a lot of people were like, at least family and friends and stuff like that, they're like, oh my God, dude, you bought exactly the same thing? Like, why did you do that? You know, what was the purpose? Like, why didn't you just keep what you had? Well, first of all, I mean, I wanted something smaller, so I've got something smaller. But honestly, the biggest thing is like, you just can't get your money back out of most of the new stuff. You're just going to have to realize that when you buy that stuff, it's it's going to, you know, depreciate. You're not going to get, this is already fully depreciated. All the uh, value as far as the tax man is concerned is gone. It's gone. So it, it'll be even less as far as I'm concerned uh, than the other one, because the other one was a year newer so my registration and all that stuff is going to be much cheaper than if i bought a new one and uh cost of ownership is going to be a lot less than a new one because a lot of times people that buy brand new they know that there's still a lot of bugs in in newer campers and newer trailers like it's just the way it goes not to mention just look at this thing like it's got so much character it's got a soul man there's only a few of these left out on the road, man. There's just, there's not a lot of people that are gonna be driving these things around. She's in excellent shape. You know, the skin is almost perfect. The underbelly, oh, the underbelly. Look at this underbelly, it's almost perfect. It's almost perfect. Look at that down there, oh my God, look how clean that looks. It is in really, really good shape. And the roof is too. I, I When I went to go look at it, I even climbed up there on top of the roof and it's in really good shape too. Uh, it does need to be resealed though. I mean, the, no one ever thought to seal anything up on that roof. So the roof itself uh, is in excellent condition. It's just, it's never been sealed. So I don't know why that's the case. I mean, that's that's one of the first things that I would do is you know, put something up there on that roof because you've got seams and you've got all those rivets. It's just a really good idea in general to go up there and seal all that stuff up to help prevent any water intrusion because it may not happen today, may not happen tomorrow, but it's gonna happen at some point. So I got two or three rolls of Eternabond tape. So that right there is $150 right out of the gate. And right now, today, I'm setting up new batteries. The ones that came with it were no good. They wouldn't hold a charge. They're not, they weren't very good quality batteries anyway. So I'm gonna add these uh, old AG, older AGM solar batteries to it and just use those. Now, as far as the inside is concerned, it looks pretty good. So it's got flooring. Cabinets are all original. I've already been in here kind of tooling around with stuff. Obviously, the decor is not really my style, so I'll probably be trying to change things up in here. I know that there are a lot of purists out there that are like, Mark, don't, don't do anything weird to it. Just camp in it. Just do it. Well, I can't do that. It's too dark. It looks like a cave in here. It's actually darker to my eyes back there than it is on this camera. I mean, it is just really, really dark in here. So there's a really good chance that I'm gonna be brightening all this stuff up. The one cool addition is this like little veranda here, this little, you know, armoire here in the back. So that is, it's actually a very convenient spot. Uh, obviously the next biggest uh, standout feature is the full size bed instead of having the two twins. The one thing I don't like about this model is that I have to do like the shuffle 
past the bed. I don't like that. But it's not horrible. Like, it's, it's totally doable, right? I mean, I'm doing it with ease. It's not that big of a deal. But, yeah, it's very dark in here, so I kind of want to uh, repaint uh, the roof, or the ceiling, rather, get it all white. And then I think I'm going to be doing the same thing to the cabinets. Again, I know the purists hate it. Uh, and I think I'm going to be taking out this refrigerator, and I'm going to do some 12-volt refrigerators, maybe one for a refrigerator and another one for a freezer. That way I can save energy on the solar system and then have maybe this much in storage extra storage maybe extra pantry space i don't know but the good news is is that all of this stuff i've done before i've done it all before uh, obviously it's going to be a little bit different because i'm not going to have the help of mike's girlfriend so i will just have to try and remember everything that we did and try and duplicate it but overall she's in damn good shape and i'm pretty excited to get started on this project so i figured that i'm just going to document the whole process so if there's any other avion uh owners out there uh, they're probably at some point going to encounter a few of the problems that I'm going to encounter. So at least we'll have this as a reference, you know, all good things. We got nice big 10 ply tires on here. The sidewalls are much thicker than the ones that I had on there. So I am, a, uh, just a bit higher up off the ground. Uh, I'm still going to basically have uh, similar problems with boondocking because this rear end, it dips down further than the front part, probably by about five or six inches. So the rear end is always much closer to the ground than the front. So even if my uh, attack, if my approach looks good, I always have to worry about my rear end. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do about that. We'll have to see. Uh, I need a new lock for this uh, city water door. It's, uh, it's no good and I can't find the key to it. All the keys that the previous owner gave to me, none of them fit. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. I don't really like the exposed lock. I might have to figure out a, a, another system. I think that I could probably just uh, redo this lock here and I should be okay. It just needs a longer cam bar. Um, these always need to be replaced. The door stop, uh, mine was uh, dry rotted too. I had to buy a piece off of Amazon and it worked just fine. Uh, I need to redo this cabinet. Uh, like I said, the refrigerator is probably gonna go and I'm thinking maybe, you know, do, um, I don't know, Maybe like a pull out refrigerator. One of those 12 volt fridge maybe just pulls right out of this area. Uh, this light doesn't work. That's a little uh, unfortunate, but I was kind of thinking of just doing like one of those little solar lights that I could put up there and it's motion detected. So anytime someone's outside anyway, it'll just automatically come on. But the belly pan, like I said, is in good shape. The uh, triple tree tongue is in fantastic shape. I got these original um, aluminum propane tanks which I didn't have on the other one uh, the windows are tinted almost completely dark I don't really like that because I really enjoyed letting the light in but I don't know that I want to mess with those so that's another reason for maybe wanting to paint it white look at this look at this this is the original jack and it still works and the original jack stand which I thought was pretty damn cool too and Brand new air conditioner up on top, just installed maybe a year or two ago. And just a little bit of touch up work here and there. I do have this, this uh, line here, so I'm a little, a little sad that this was there, but it's not bad, it's not horrible. I can totally live with that. And when we come back around to the back, the exact same window as I had on the Legrand. And I still have the license plate holder. When I was in Arizona, <laughs> my license plate holder fell off. I don't know what the hell happened. Oh, and someone has welded this bar here. This is not factory. And they have installed a hitch receiver. That is pretty daggone cool. So I might be able to put like a rack or a bike rack or something back here. If anything else, or if nothing else, I could always just put uh, a flat piece of metal there and maybe use it as a generator stand or something like that who knows the possibilities are quite literally endless at any rate guys i want to thank you all for watching yet another riveting episode here on the avion awesome channel i'm your host Robert Puckett, and i'm going to see you guys again on the next one peace